It's done on fire right here on High TV, your luxury channel. Thank you so very much for tuning in. It's all made possible by our friends at LICC Jeans. We're checking out Blue Waters Vada. Isn't this place just absolutely amazing? We're going to be speaking to a fabulous guest. Not only she works in hair and beauty, but at the same time, she has done so much towards the youth and the industry. We're going to speak more when we see you with everything tasty on the other side. Fire right here on High TV, and we are at this beautiful location. That's of course Blue Waters Barber. I must say, a big thank you to them. We will know the internal story there. Hi, Naina, and thank you so very much Hi. for joining us. Uh, to start things off, let's eat. Of Here course. you go, I'll offer a bun to you. Yeah, thank you. No, we that's the bun hungry. that I wanted. You took oh, the bun okay. that I wanted. Thanks. <laughs> Just wanted to fight over the buns as well. That's okay. okay. So tell me, Naina, yes. you have driven yourself here. Yes. And uh, you are someone who loves food. Those two we can talk about, correct? Yeah, of course. Okay. Why not? So, mm, good food is a great way to start. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So tell me about this love for food. Have mm -hmm. you always been the person who opens the buffet or does not feel shy when you go for house no. parties? All. Not always, but uh, not shy at all. But one of the first. Yeah, can't be bothered, no? Mm, it's also first. annoying when you just go on waiting for another person. They'll never start. Like, look at us. We have dug ourselves deep into yeah. this. Alright, so you are a very busy person. And the last thing I can notice in you is you are not the, the typical person who might run a salon. Who is quite flamboyant, extremely dolled up. Why is that? This is my personality. I'm very happy with who I am. Why should I change for anybody else? <laughs> uh, the, my work is not in my looks, so it's my talent. That's true. But wh what sort of drove you into this industry? Tell me about the story to the start of Nayana. I really don't know, but it, it started most probably when I was about 13 or 14. Mm. I mean, we all played with her as children. Okay. I used to, my mother says, I used to wait till my grandmother came and remove her hover you know, the wig and play mm. with it. But I think that all children did. But before all levels, I was very sure I wanted to do hairdressing. I think uh, it happened when we went for a wedding. My mother took me for the wedding and mm. I saw the bride and I was quite impressed. I remember... Ki uh, impressed, which is yeah, great. Yeah, Kitta had done the oh, makeup. Kirti, okay. And of course, Janet was there. My mother knew Janet and oh. they had a chat about this that this girl is interested and Janet said it's a good age if she's, she's doing all of us let her finish the thing come mm. so so I I think I was always interested and never ever regretted it so who was your first teacher who sort of Janet of course oh really mm. how was it to work with her because I got to know her I think few years before she passed away she's full of joy and the best part is she's so well groomed at any time see if you know the story of Janet uh, I, I think you can really write a book. She's she's uh, she's mega had, woman, no? Yeah, she's had a share of problems. Five children. She's mm. had miserable marriage. She's had a business to run, and right through it all, right, I saw it all because I studied from with her and then I worked for her. Right through it all, she maintained her dignity. She maintained the beauty. You know, she was very beautiful. She she's a very outgoing person. But I have never seen another woman next after my mother who was as decent as Janet. She could have had all the men in this country. 
just like that but so nice and very elegant and with all that very god fearing extreme helpful because and i remember she, she coming to she is definitely sitting there Yeah, Never, I should be the happiest over this conversation. I must say, um, Aunt Janet used to come to St Peter's College for Mass oh. when I was in school. Mm. She used to come with a sweat band in oh, pink yeah. and um, the wristbands were also in pink. Everything was to match. Yeah. Full on makeup even before a sports activity. Yeah, yeah, she was. Over. She's always, always said that. Even to the market, mm-hmm. you have to put your dress properly and go. Don't go like that. <laughs> Now the sweat band you talk about, mm. it definitely to hide her hair because it would have been messy after walking on the beach. and she would wear a wear a scarf in style oh. to cover it make it fashion right just definitely so mm-hmm. that was your route to where you are today uh, today you have dressed so many people you have done so much of work what is it that hair and beauty has taught you apart from the obvious i think it has taught me the importance of a good per- well groomed personality mm. and it's also taught me that it's 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 a responsibility of every person man or woman and it doesn't come it, it comes cheap if you plan it you don't need to spend money you don't have to be somebody or you don't have to uh, uh throw a lot of you know th- that that belief is wrong you you can really be very elegant very good yeah. you know i tell you a story dano well some time ago i did a grooming session for a group of girls in ampara mm. we had about 250 people i did it for a company okay. and it was at the town hall of ampal and while talking i could see at the far corner mm. an old lady was seated there obviously she had brought her granddaughter mm. and she's waiting for the course to finish from where i was to that distance i could see she was well groomed so i called her now this is a woman most probably a, a farmer farmer wife or i don't know you know she was in a sari and the blouse is matched to the sari you know a jacket cared for mm. not any old hat te cared for then her eyes nicely combed with oil tied up and skin is like you know the leathered because they are in the sun yeah. but need Meat. some powder okay there's a chain i don't know whether it's gold so final thing i lifted a sari to see she is wearing slippers not rubber serapu not rubber slippers she is wearing slippers sari so perfect total grooming so i just started in the culture understanding the where yeah, you are about and, and, and presenting the best good, of you looking good within your capacity yeah and that's, that's cool. yeah looking good within your capacity is the key everyone thinks you know you need to shop you the big brands to, you don't yeah you know that it's all about trying to maintain the best of you that's, that's right. what it is yeah, well right. uh, we have so much to talk about because um, she's a mom she she's strict <laughs> so much to talk about when we do come back with naina do stick around big shout out to our friends who are making this all possible this fabulous hotel thank you for your hospitality the starters are so good we cannot wait to taste the main we'll see you on the other side do stick around it's done one fire right here on hi tv made possible by our friends at lcc chain <laughs> This is Wadu, and this is Dano and Fire. In and out of Colombo, and we have got ourselves out of Colombo to enjoy the blue ocean away from Colombo. All right, in conversation with Nana, and she has a sizzling plate in front of her. Sizzling. Yeah, sizzling. It's the correct thing to say. So now let's speak about home front. Uh, you have kids. You're yeah. a mum. You're not a grandmum still. No, though. not not yet. yet. Not promoted still. No. No. But you want to be promoted. Yeah, yeah, not, but, I, but, well. but I wouldn't push it on my children. That's their choice. Their choice, okay, okay. No, no, no. I understand that. I'm just trying to push it on you. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> so, how are you as a mum? Oh, I think I'm a good mum. 
Oh. <laughs> Are you the type who wakes up in the morning, cooks, feeds oh, the children? Oh, of course I yeah. cook and I feed. I make sure that, especially now because my one son is at home and mm. he's your, like you, your age and uh, you have to be careful Excuse with me, what food. do you mean my age? <laughs> okay, as handsome and sim- young uh, yeah, as Similar you are. capacity, but he's like, I think, six years older than me. Okay then. Yeah. Just wanted <laughs> okay, to put similar. that out there. I'm a young little tender chicken. Okay. So anyway, tell me. So, yeah, so I cook and I, I do a lot of housework. Are you, were you the mum who gets involved and says, okay, now what are you going to study? What are you studying? No, I, I never push them. They had their, they had their, they were told what they should do. They had to perform, they had to show results, but they were never, both my boys were very heavily into sports oh. and they did very well. One was a national diver for many, many years, springboard, uh, and done a lot of international competitions. Other like one me, was a rower. Very sporty. <laughs> mm. And uh, so they, but they were told to please, you have to study and mm. get your results. So they both did their studies. They both went to universities, got their degrees. Okay. So I'm, I'm happy. Uh, you didn't care what they chose, but you wanted them to follow the principle that your mum told you. Whatever exactly. you're studying, study the employable level. That's what your mum said, right? Be Tell qualified. me about that story. Rudy. Be qualified. When I wanted to do hairdressing, I think it was quite a shock for her. Mm-hmm. And um, it was a no return situation where I was quite adamant. Okay. And, and, um, but what are the other options she had for you? Um, see, the thing is, I come, my family, she herself fought and became a graduate. She wanted to study. And uh, when she had her struggles, somebody had advised her saying, listen, yeah, they advised her parents saying, listen, if this girl gets into trouble, hard life in her older years, she will curse you. So my grandparents got scared and got her, allowed her to study okay. and become a graduate. Mm. So I think, it, and it happened so, when mm. she was 32, she was widowed. She was only 32 with wow. four children. So she was able to run the la- our lives, mm. her life also very well. I always say we didn't lose her father, we lost her mother. Because she did three jobs and she was the mother of, father of the ha- house. So she realized, I'm sure, life was slightly easier because she was educated, mm. qualified. So she and she had an understanding of what the world was all about. Yes, and she insisted that all four of us, mm. two girls, two boys, they had to be professionally qualified in, in whatever. whatever. Because they you do. also wanted to do Bharatanatyam. I did Bharatanatyam. So and she because again we had uh, my teacher was from the from our area, Karaniya, a single age girl, but done gone to Kalakshetra and done very well, very well as a teacher and a successful dancer. Do you know any of the... Oh, I did my Arangitram. My, oh, wow. I did my Arangitram, yeah. So, so she said, uh, if you want, you can pursue that as a career and uh, if you, I'll send you to Karakshetra. But I was not good in music. Hmm. I couldn't uh, relate to Carnatic music, but I still love dancing. But life has definitely changed from then to today. I think today women need to be I think women, in a way, rule the world. See, my argument is, uh, Danu, women anyway rule the world simply by being a mother. Yeah. Right? So, we are the center of the home and we give the greatest influence everywhere, not only Sri Lanka, anywhere. And the mother, uh, there are so many good fathers, but the connection, maybe, yeah. maybe nature, biological, whatever, I don't know. But my issue actually is with the women in Sri Lanka, my issue is that so many of them waste their time. I'm not saying to do a job, but I want them to be productive. You, your day, the, the eight to 10 hours of your, 16 hours of your waking time, you have to be productive, either grow some trees or plants or have a nicer house or get rid of your servants and do the house. Do be productive. People just do nothing. Read a book, write a book, teach some children, feed some dogs, anything. So that's what I really there has to be some about. kind of contribution no uh, leave alone the gender today I think I think it's a it's a rule overall I, something needs to be given out of one person's life on earth I think that's you have to give back yeah. very important well on that note we need to get into a break but on the other side we are going to leave this mammoth of a meal here and get into something that she loves the most sweet for my sweets we'll see you on the other side do stick around it's done on fire right here on high tv
final segment at Blue Waters Vadua, dining in style with Naina. Uh, Naina, you are a sweet fan. Of course. Tell me about this sweet addiction. How bad is it? Very bad. Really? Yes. I absolutely love sweets. So I I make up for it. I give up on lots of other things. I don't mind not eating short uh, savouries. Oh. And I try to exercise. And anyway, I'm under control. I have oh, no good. problems. That's the most important thing, no? if you can eat yes. with all your other things. Now tell me about, uh, you tell me a fun story about when your dad passed away. <laughs> eating biscuits. <laughs> yeah. You oh. want to try this Alaska, right? Yes, yeah, so mm. <laughs> the story is that we were, when we were small, we were made to behave. Mm. So when we go to a place, you can only, when, uh, those days we didn't have a choice, generally Mari biscuits mm. and, and those uh, aerated waters oh. like the lemonade, orange, orange, orange bar, bar, yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, those were the best things. To yeah. Give. So we are offered, and my we we all take one biscuit each. Then when the second time it's offered, we are dying to have another one. Mm. But my mother has said no. So we say no, thank you, please. So we and then of course they keep the uh, plate in front of us, and we are looking at <laughs> it and waiting. My many a time my brothers had slowly. Robbed a few. Uh, robbed a few yeah. and they would get into the car and eat them. Mm. Obviously the host would have seen it. Yes. My mother didn't. Right. So <laughs> so so this is always there. And, mm. and you know those days we didn't have anything extra, no? We were very middle class families. So when my father died and I was seven years old and I had fallen asleep, by that time the funeral person had gone. And when I got up there were two aunties and mm. I was bathed and washed and you I were, never... Were, they, were, they were babysitting you. Yeah, they, mm. I never got that comfort. Uh. And then I came out, we have a huge veranda, mm. under that um, uh, veranda and then there the portico. Under uh. that, you know, these uh, 10 kilo biscuits uh. tins and orange wholesale. barley. Oh. Yeah, wholesale. Mm. Because the tradition then was everyone who came home after the funeral from the cemetery, they all get biscuits and orange barley. Then they stay for the mala butter, which is the This is dinner. the pre-refreshment. Yeah, yeah. Pre-refreshment. So now I am mean, now I guess. So now they are all very simple. In the Baba, in the Baba, come, come. So now I am eating and I am eating. And I have never got Mari biscuits that day. Non-stop. Any amount. Now I'm drinking orange barley and eating Mari biscuit, drinking orange barley and Mari. I don't know how many I ate. So I thought the greatest thing that can happen to a girl <laughs> is for her father to die. At that age. Yes, because it was <laughs> such fun to have so many biscuits. And non-stop. Non-stop, no restriction. Everybody saying, eat some more, eat <laughs> some more, eat some more. So it was hilarious. Um, I was on my feeding bottle for a long time, mm -hmm. even when I was six. Mm -hmm. Even when I was seven, I just loved it so much because my mom couldn't wake me up. I'll always be like, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> so when my father passed away, I had to stop on my first first day because it was quite embarrassing. People were looking at me like, hmm, mm. he's still drinking off a bottle. Mm. Due to public pressure at that age, I stopped. That was the only thing I had to let go of this because I was quite upset about the fact that you know people were viewing this. Um, now, you uh, have contributed so much towards the hair and beauty industry. Where do you think it stands in Sri Lanka? Are we on par internationally? Yes, quality-wise, certain people, not all, the industry. Industry has grown tremendously and, and got ruined tremendously. also tremendously. Yeah, because um, we, 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 are a, we are an industry that has not got anybody's help. And government recognizes that we never held both we never demanded we never no the government never spent a rupee on educating us so we have done well industry has grown apparently unofficial we have 43,000 salons in the country including barber salons and huge number being 3,000 okay that's all uh, more. no uh, no it's it's only 21 million people yeah. no? so and uh, that way then the second problem is that uh, to get into the industry, you need talent, but most of them don't have sufficient education. Mm. When I say education, any education, not necessarily all level sales, any education makes you a better person. Right. Anything. So, you g come into the uh, industry only with talent and hard work, and the industry gives you lots of money. So, when lots of money come to the uneducated, they yes, go yes. haywire. 
Yeah, so that way we have got ruined. The quality, the standards have got ruined. But on the other hand, we are certainly very, very good in our quality. Certain, certain. Um, level. Out of all the Asian countries, where are, where do we? Um, where would you place us? Uh, my experience through World Federation is leaders are definitely Japan and Korea. Mm. Korea and Japan, I would say. And second close followers are. Uh, Hong Kong, Singapore and now China, not before but now China, I would even say. Then of course even, we are all uh, Indonesia, uh, Philippines, Sri Lanka, we are all on one on level. The... India is very good but if you look at 1.1 billion people, I would only look at 200 good hairdressers. Okay. So that proportion wise we are far better. Because for a small island, yeah, we, are, we are maven. maven yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's fascinating because, you know, we never thought of the fact that this hair and beauty industry is not supported by any no, it uh, is like not. A, like a fact, body. In fact, uh, I myself didn't realize it because once, some I remember some time ago, we were called by the government, mm. the Ministry of Finance, to, we had a hair and beauty cluster for budget purposes. Or, so, at that time, the officials were saying, we respect you for never burdening us, the government. Mm. Which I think is true. And also, should not be a burden, no? They should be quite happy. No, they're happy. They, yeah. they, were, they appreciated us. We never demanded anything. They not did the, they spend anything Do on us. Do you think it will ever come into the system of education where they'll be able to learn hair and beauty? And well, the education systems are there, but like it, with any uh, the, the government itself has lots of systems. The NVQ levels are there, but uh, uh, you know, the we are a skill. So not only hairdressing, I remember when we did the skill standards for hairdressing in 2005, there were 27 skills in the country that they were revamping. So all those skills from printing to masonry yeah. or everything, all those skills are their skill related. So the education has to be, training has to be 80% on practical work. Yeah. So lots of uh, training centers don't give yeah. emphasis on that. So then the quality, quality drops comes. down. All right. Well, on that note, we need to wrap things up. I've kept half of this cake for you. Thank you. you. Mm, there you go. See, that's much about I care about her. <laughs> All right. We need to wrap things up on the show. Nana, thank you so very much for coming. Thank you. Uh, actually, just to wrap things up, uh, we had to reshoot this show. She was kind enough to make it, which is amazing. And very rarely people will not fuss, and you never did. It was just, okay, when? I'll be there. And you gave us your free time, and thank you so very much. Thank Always you. honored and grateful and pleasure. Thank you. Uh, she's definitely a remarkable woman, an army of her own. Um, we will see you with another brilliant episode on Done on Fire. Till then, you keep smiling. It's a wrap on the show. Thank you to the hotel that hosted us today, and of course to LICC Jeans. Until we see you then, you keep smiling. It's a wrap. Bye.